everyone and welcome to my third week pet show. This week I'm going to be talking about biological filtration and I'll just get right into it. We're going to start off with the three parts of filtration, three types. There's mechanical filtration, chemical filtration, and biological filtration. Mechanical filtration is the type of filtration that takes out solid particles in the water. Any type of food that's floating around in the water or poop the mechanical filtration catches that and it takes it out of the water. Then you have chemical filtration and you get that from that activated carbon that's in your filter pads. That kind of makes the water look crystal clear. It makes it really nice and clear. And then you have your biological filtration, which is often overlooked in many freshwater tanks and turtle tanks, amphibian tanks, so on. Saltwater tanks, it's not overlooked as much because more people think about it with saltwater tanks, um, but it's still overlooked sometimes. Now how, now how uh, biological filtration works is it's a natural process. What happens when food and poop get in the water is uh, bacteria in the water turn that into ammonia, which is very toxic to fish. Over time, on your biological media, good bacteria grow which convert that ammonia into nitrite. Nitrite is also not good for your fish but it's not as bad as ammonia. And there's a second type of good bacteria in the biological filtration process that turns nitrite into nitrate. Nitrate is almost barely harmful to fish. In very very high amounts it can be slightly harmful and it causes excess algae growth in your tank but the basic the process of it turns ammonia eventually into nitrate. And that's what your biological uh, filtration does and you need the good bacteria to do that. So the problem is many people use filters like this hang on back filter here that you see. The problem with these types of filters is at the end of the week or the end of the month you take off the top, you take out your filter pad and you put in a new one. The thing is Biological bacteria that works for biological filtration takes a couple weeks at least to start building and growing up. And it grows on things like your filter pad and other types of biological media. Here's some bio balls, there's bio ceramic, bio glass, there's all types of bio media. And these would be in a canister filter or in a sump tank. And in a canister filter you would take out the media and you would rinse these under tank water only not tap water to kind of clean them off if you had to and you would replace the the filter pad part of the canister filter but you would never replace or clean the biological media you never clean biological media it always keeps that beneficial bacteria on it and you never want to kill off that bacteria it's needed in your tank the more fish in your tank the more uh, bacteria is needed so if you accidentally kill off your bacteria you could have an ammonia spike and all your fish could die so if you're using a hang on back type filter, it's best to get one with a bio wheel. I'm sure you guys have seen those before, they have a wheel in front. Now those bio wheels aren't quite as good as a larger scale uh, biological filtration thing such as a canister filter or a sump tank. But the bio wheels will provide enough that you should be alright for most applications. The big problem is turtle tanks and amphibian tanks. I see lots of people using filters like the smaller fluval filters. This one's actually a fluval 4. It's a really big one. But people use those smaller ones and the problem is <clears throat> yes beneficial bacteria will, will grow in the filter pad but once every week or two you take out that filter pad and either rinse it out really good or replace it <clears throat> and then all your, all your beneficial bacteria is gone and you, your tank will have an ammonia spike and your fish or turtles, amphibians, whatever, they can die. <clears throat> so if you do have just a fluval in your tank really the best way to clean it is take out a couple cups of, t of tank water and then strain out that filter in the tank water. Never clean it in tap water. If you clean it in tank water that bacteria will stay alive. <clears throat> now if you want to get really good you can make a sump tank and you have to use an overflow box for this. My sump tank is a 10 gallon tank. It looks a little dirty on top here but that's just kind of like uh, bubbles and stuff that have accumulated. And this is a salt water tank. Now what happens is the overflow box drains water down this tube. Water is always coming down this tube. It's going into the left side of my sump tank where I've got tons of bio balls. And half are underwater, half are over water. 
it helps sometimes to have kind of a biofiltration that's out of water. For a sump tank setup, you kind of want it to rain over the bio balls and have them be out of water but constantly wet. That helps biofiltration work even better. So a sump tank is really amazing if you can set it up. And I have mine, the water drains into the bio balls on the left side. It's completely filled with bio balls this left side. And then there's the filter, which actually pulls water from the right side and cir cir uh, circulates it around a lot back to the bio balls. And then underneath, I don't know if you can see it, <coughs> I have a pump in there that pumps water back up all the way up and back in <coughs> to my main tank. Now this is an extreme setup that most people don't do unless they're into saltwater tanks. But something like this keeps your bacteria levels, your good bacteria levels so high that ammonia has never been in my tank, never been a problem, and neither is nitrate. For testing your levels, you're going to want to use, now, now lots of people say uh, these uh, paper test strips aren't so good, you should get the liquid testing, it's a lot more accurate. That's true, they are more accurate, the liquid testing kits. But for quick testing, just to know that you're in a safe level, you can get these quick test uh, dip st uh, strips. And these particular ones are good for fresh or salt water. And all you do is take out one of these strips, dip it into your tank water, and then there's a guide on here. You line it up and it'll tell you all the levels. You compare it to your stick and it'll tell you if all your levels are good. So you should be checking your water at least once a week. <clears throat> Make sure all your levels are good. You should be doing water changes, 25%, at least once a month. And what I suggest if you don't want to make a big sump tank or you don't want to make uh, put a big canister filter on that might be expensive, what I would suggest is getting two filters for your tank. Either two fluvals, one hang on back, one fluval, you know, whatever you want. But get two filters. And then what you can do is replace the pads two weeks separately at least. So it's best to rinse off the pads and it's best to, like I said, have like bio wheel filters. That would be even better. But replace your filter pads at different times. Never replace both of them at the same time. And that way you should have some biological bacteria on one. If you replace the other one, you should be all right. So that's the cheap and like kind of quick way out of getting some biological filtration always in your tank is to use two filters. Um, all right, I, I think I covered basically the, the main points and why it's important. Ammonia, let me just go over, is very deadly to fish. This is why it's important to have biological filtration. If you have ammonia in your tank, your fish can die within a day. Like, not very long at all. Ammonia is very, very, very bad for fish, turtles, amphibians, anything. If you have ammonia in your tank, you, any ammonia, even slight levels, fish probably aren't going to die, aren't going to live more than a day or two. Now, like I said, your biological bacteria turns that into nitrite first. Nitrite isn't good for your fish, but a little bit won't hurt them. They could live for a couple weeks with, with just a little bit, but it's very stressful on them. You don't want to have any nitrate if possible in your tank. And then it converts to nitrate, like I said, and that's not really harmful to your fish, but nitrate is what algae and plants feed on, so if you have a lot of nitrate in your tank, your tank may become filled with algae. All right, uh, I just thought this was an important to topic to talk about. Some uh, some people don't really realize the 